Hello, hi guys, it's Inam here with the Samsung Galaxy S6 and we're going to take a look at how to set up PS4 Remote Play on this device. Now if you want to use your DualShock 4 controller as well then you need to make sure you've got root access on your handset. If you don't have root access then you will simply be able to use the PS4 Remote Play application with the on-screen controls. But I'll leave a link down in the description box below to a previous video showing you how to root your S6 and your S6 Edge here as well. But as you can see I've got my DualShock 4 controller in the background so I'll be going through that process as well. So the first thing that you need to do is head on over into your settings, go into security, scroll down and make sure unknown sources is enabled. This simply allows you to install applications outside of the Play Store. Next, you need to download the PS4 Remote Play APK. Again, I'll leave a link to it down in the description box below. Once you've downloaded it and got it onto your handset, locate it. I'm going to use the My Files app to show you where mine is. Scroll down and here it is, Remote Play version 1.2.apk. Tap on this and hit install. It doesn't take too long at all. There we go, that's already done. I'm not going to open it straight away. I'm going to hit done just to get rid of this. And the next thing that we need to do is head on over into the Play Store because we need an application to link up our controller with our handset. And that application is called Six Axis Controller. So head on over here, download this and install it. This simply allows you to use PS3 and PS4 controllers uh, with your handset. Whoops, so that's all installed and what we're now going to do is head on over into the 6-axis controller and it says 6-axis controller must be enabled in language and keyboard settings to use the 6-axis. Change the settings now, yep. So we'll go in here and make sure 6-axis is enabled then we'll come out of it. Now we just want to make sure that my um, controller is active which it is and then what we're going to do is select start from here it says getting bluetooth address and let's see what it says driver starting oh this is why you need to be rooted it's asking for root access we'll hit grant that's uh, been granted there and it says touchscreen device created successfully successfully configured Bluetooth listening for controllers so that doesn't mean it's connected just yet so let's see if it does anything connecting oh there we go client one connected so it just wanted some input from the controller now that's very rare that it connects first time even for my standards so if yours doesn't connect first time you will have to use a USB on the go cable to connect the one end into your device and the other end using the USB cable that came with your handset with your DualShock 4 controller and then connect it via that method. But this one's paired here now so the other tip that you're going to need to do is go into your preferences along the top here go to gamepad settings and make sure there's a tick next to enable gamepad. This allows you to use some of the native buttons assigned to the DualShock 4 when you're playing games. And another tip I'll give you is go into edit mappings because sometimes the buttons don't work. For example, if you press X, it doesn't go into settings sometimes uh, or when you use triangle, it doesn't go back or vice versa. So go to edit map mappings even and then select uh, a button. So I'm going to use cross first of all. And you can see it's uh, mapped to X and you think that is the same but it's not. These mappings here are actually Xbox controller buttons. So if I bring in an Xbox controller here, you can see the equivalent of X on the PlayStation is A on the 360 controller here. So what we need to do to configure cross, we need to select A. And for example, for square on the PlayStation controller, its equivalent is X on the 360. So if we go to square here, and the equivalent of this we said was X. So there we go. We'll do triangle as well. So the equivalent of triangle on the DualShock 4 is Y on the 360. So we'll go to triangle, and then we'll select Y from here. And we'll do circle as well. So circle on the DualShock 4 is the equivalent of B on the 360. So we'll select circle here, and we'll select B mappings. And I've noticed this works very well for me, so it's worth checking out if you're having some uh, mapping issues. So we'll come out of that. That's all done. 
come out of that. So we've connected our handset with our device. Now it's time for the PS4 remote play application. So locate it from your app drawer. Here we go. And it says you can use a DualShock 4 wireless controller. Uh, this to register it via this application doesn't actually work. That's why we used the third party six access application. So we can skip this part. And again, the register button down here doesn't actually do anything because as I say, this is related to Sony devices where this app has been ported from. So just make sure your controller is connected via that six axis controller application that we've downloaded. When you load up the PS4 application here, hit next, and then it's going to try and contact your account online. And it looks like, yeah, it normally prompts you to enter a email address and password. It looks like mine's going through automatically and it says cannot find the PS4 remote play. So as it mentioned, we'll go into our settings here, then scroll down to remote play. There we go, remote play connection settings. And then from here, we'll hit add device. Now we'll need to enter this code three, two, eight, six, eight, one, one, three. We'll hit done and this should connect up to our PS4 once we hit register and we should start hearing the sounds of the PlayStation 4 and here we go. I'll just put up the volume. You can see the screen of the PS4 here and the on-screen controls which you can use absolutely fine. Now do bear in mind this is as good as your Wi-Fi connection. By that I mean if your Wi-Fi connection to your console is quite poor, expect there to be a little bit lag, ooh, a little bit of a lag between when you press buttons and for them to actually take effect. So do bear that in mind. So here we go, Grand Theft Auto's loaded up here. And let's see if we can get into a car or something. Ooh, see if the buttons do what I thought. Oh, missed that opportunity. Let's see if we can run around. X definitely works as I expect it to. Some of the time when you're using six axis controller, it doesn't map the buttons properly. So that's why I explained you want to map it as closely as you can to the Xbox controls I mentioned. Triangle to get in the car. Yes, that works. Absolutely awesome. So let's use the trigger buttons. That works as expected. And the trigger buttons work as I expect as well. Left hand side triggers work as well. Let's just see if we can Just jump out of the car. So that's working as I expected. And there we have it guys. That's how easily you can set up PS4 remote play with your Samsung Galaxy S6. As well as your S6 Edge, the process is exactly the same. And as I mentioned earlier, if you want to use your DualShock 4 controller, you need to have a rooted handset, but you don't need to have root access if you simply want to use a remote play with the on-screen controls. As ever, any comments or questions you guys have got, hit them up in the comment section down below there. Please like, subscribe and tag along on social media at Enamka4. Thanks for watching, have a wicked day and we'll see you next time.